Okay, welcome back everyone for another session of Running Remote. So we are with Lila von Alvensleben and Jim Kalbach from Mural. I absolutely love these folks. I've been following them for many years. I love what they do. They also support Running Remote really, really well. And you can go see their booth uh, at the expo area. It has been sponsoring the event as well. Mural centers around a digital whiteboard collaboration space where teams work together in real time or asynchronously, completely transforming work, completely transforming how teams work together. So today is going to be a really fun uh, session today we're going to work hybrid so we're going to have a, a live attendees working on a workshop with them while online attendees are also joining so you guys are going to work together today it's going to be really really fun if you are right now in the live uh, audience you can also move forward toward us so we can be all together uh, if you have questions there will be a Q&A at the end of the session again so if you want to ask questions please go on slido sli.do in your browser and then type the code rr22 and then you can be able to ask questions there we'll have five to ten minutes to ask questions we have a good amount of time 50 minute session so I think we're gonna be able to have could have my question answered so thank you so much again for joining and please go watch them uh, go see them at the expo area thank you so much for coming to running remote lovely session good All luck right. thank All you right. hello everyone i am lila head of culture and collaboration at mural this is jim i'm jim caldback the chief evangelist at mural a collaborative intelligence company thanks for joining the session Yes, and as Daphne mentioned, we have virtual participants too. Yeah. This is going to be an interactive session in a little bit. We are going to give you some context first. If you have a device, I see some people have laptops here, which is always a good idea at a running remote conference. Um, if you have a laptop, you can open it. We will share a link in about 20 minutes. If you don't have a laptop, uh, on the tables, there's paper and pen. You can use that as well. And if you're online, you are already on some kind of computer or device. Um, so we're going yeah, to take it to the right agenda. It. We got a lot to cover, Lila. What do we have, Jim? We have a warm-up. We're going to do a short activity in a, in a minute. And then Lila is going to talk to us about rituals. Then we have a larger group activity. And we'll wrap it up with some final thoughts before Q&A. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. All right. You Let's ready with your camera? I am ready. All I right. am going to take a picture for this warm-up. <laughs> and that is... We're going to do a couple of there. questions. So if you're on Hopin, man the chat and answer their yes or no questions. Just answer yes or no in the chat or a Y or an N. If you're here in the room and you answer this question yes, raise your hand. If it's a no, keep your hand down. Okay? So first question is just a warm-up. Wait one second. There's no link yet. The code for Slido. <laughs> RR22 on Slido. There we go. But we're doing this question here live. This is a little bit of a warm up for this group here. So do you prefer remote work over working in an office? Who, re who prefers remote work? Put your hands up. Let's see him. We got to see him. Lila's going to be taking a picture. So keep your hand up. Put it up higher. Thanks. Back there. And then online, if it's a yes or no, please type in yes or no. You get that, Lila? Yes. All right. Next question. That was a warm up. Does your work require to be physically present in the office sometimes? Some companies have mandates to be in the office. In fact, there was a news article yesterday where an exec at Apple left. And his biggest point of protest because they were forcing him to be back in the office three days a week. You've heard of the Apple controversy around office mandates. Any office mandates in the room or online? None. I, I, right. think, I think this is a biased sample again, <laughs> once again here. First two questions. We got a big no there, I think. We do have a big no. Let's see, let's see this one now. The final question. Particularly before the pandemic happened, have you ever been on a hybrid call? That is where you have folks in the room and folks who are remote and the in-person team forgot to dial up the remote participants. You start the call, and about five minutes in, you go, Lila's not online. Who is going to dial her? You've, you've experienced that. You got, you got the photo of this? I am. Put your hands back up. Sorry, in the room. guys. Type in the yes or the no there, too. Yeah. All right. I've experienced that. You ever been the remote person? 
And you're looking at your watch, and it's five minutes after, and you're like, when is the, why is the meeting started? Why does that happen? Because the people walk, they're walking down the hallway in the office, and they see each other. That's the roll call, right? We're all here. Let's get started. Oh, we forgot to dial in the remote, the remote participants. Every year, we do a survey on remote work in general, and we ask people, what is the typical situation they're in? And one thing that we found is hybrid is not new. Hybrid working is not new. We've been doing this. It's a primary mode of, of communication collaboration, even before the pandemic. We just sucked at it before. We were really, really bad at it before. So when we talk about going back to the office, right, opening up offices again, going to have mandates and things like that, we can't go back to the old way of collaborating, right? So one of the points we want to show is what are the new behaviors and what are the new rituals that you need to adopt, and how do you need to do that in order to have effective hybrid collaboration? So we think that it's uh, remote and hybrid, they're here to stay, and we need to change our behaviors more than anything. So I'm going to let Lila then talk about rituals, and I'll let you take over sh sharing your screen, Lila. Yes. If you want to. I will share my screen. There you go. Um, Thank you. So we have some people backstage putting some pictures there for us. But I wanted to talk about rituals, right? Yeah. Um, so we tend to confuse habits and rituals. And I would say that habits are things that you do more automatically, so without thinking. Let me say that, for example, summon. sound is our... Summon me. You're, I'm summoning you. you did <laughs> I did summon you. All right. Sorry. There you go. Um, this works. Okay. So habits are things that you may do more automatically without thinking. Let's say you get up in the morning, you just wake up, you commute, you just do that automatically, right? These are habits that don't have a lot of reflection behind it. And rituals are, um, are much more mindful. So you can take a shower in a more habitual way where you just take a shower without thinking, or you can take a shower where you're actually preparing for it, right? So think about these easily repeatable habits with a lot more mindfulness. And there's usually a clear beginning, middle, and end. And I was giving some examples like the shower, but there's actually a lot more examples of rituals in your day-to-day. -day. So you can clean the house as a habit without thinking about it, or you can do it in a very mindful way. You can clean your house by playing a certain song, you choose your favorite vacuum cleaner, or maybe having a meal. You have it in a specific way. If you make it into a ritual, it's something you do um, repeatedly, but with more intention behind it. And then when we think of rituals, we also think of things like journaling or meditating. Those are rituals too, but you could also do other things in a more mindful way every single day. And um, I want to kind of show the evolution of how a habit can become a routine and a ritual. So a habit is that automatic thing you do all the time without thinking. Let's say um, waking up is a habit, but waking up and then making your bed, that requires more intention. So that can become a routine, but you're not making your bed with a real mindful intention behind it. So when you do it in a very mindful way, that's when it becomes a ritual. So hopefully that, um, that is helpful. So the more effort and the more consciousness you put into these actions, the more ritual it becomes. And we wanted to also share some examples at work. I shared the ones we do in our day-to-day, -day, like uh, taking a shower or making your bed. But what are things we do at work? So at Mural, for example, this is a ritual that we have when we hire a new uh, muralista. We ask them these three questions. Why do you want to join Mural? What impact will you make at Mural? And what is something weird about you? And as we've grown, we've asked this question to many, many uh, people who joined the company. And we used to do that at the All Hands. Um, and now we do them in smaller teams because our All Hands is just huge. And we've hired so many people lately. Another um, example of another company, so not Mural, are IBM Playbacks. I don't know if we have anyone from IBM today. Any IBMers? <laughs> No IBMers right now? Maybe, maybe online. <laughs> yeah, maybe online. So IBM playbacks are these reflection rituals. So when somebody speaks and explains something to IBM, the IBMer will say to that person, let me play, back, let me play that back to you. So it's kind of like an active listening. I'm listening to what you're saying, and then I say it back to you. And that's what they, what they call a playback. And so it's a ritual that they have. They, they listen in a mindful way. And another um, ritual that we may be familiar with here are agile methodologies. Um, so agile in general is 
a, is a series of rituals, and one of them is the retrospective. So when you have a retrospective, again, you're reflecting. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you're reflecting what you've just done as a team, and you do that usually maybe once a week at the end of a design sprint week, and by repeating it, right, you're preparing for that action each week. It's a ritual that you're repeating. So if you want to know more about rituals and, and how they are different from habits and routines, we will share this mural um, in a minute. And there's two articles there about the power of rituals. There's also a blog post um, that we wrote about check-ins and why you should do them. Because check-in is a mural uh, ritual that we have, which we're going to demo in a second. And these are two books that we will also let you access later. So you can just double click on these thumbnails. One is called uh, Turning People into Teams. Uh, the other one is Rituals for Virtual Meetings, which I'm sure is going to interest a lot of the people here. Uh, so definitely recommend that if you're looking into rituals. Yeah, I think rituals are really important for developing a healthy culture of collaboration, that rituals might sound like some very small activities, but it's the sum of all of the rituals that a company has that in part drives culture. So when we talk about creating a culture of collaboration or moving towards hybrid work or even remote work, um, one of the answers that we like to give is do it ritual, a ritual at a time. You don't have to think about boiling the ocean. Just pick some rituals and think about how you're going to do those in a very mindful and deliberate way. And we have a couple of examples here that we're going to actually do, right, Lila? Is that what we yes. want to do now? Yes. So one ritual that has a, actually a lot of power and overcomes that problem that we had about the hybrid team starting before the remote team has even dialed in is a check-in. Lila has a great blog post on check-ins. We have a lot of check-in. Again, it might sound like something that's very, very small, but uh, um, you, you change culture one ritual at a time. So a check-in is before you're about to uh, have a meeting or a workshop or some real-time collaboration, that you simply take a moment to pause. It doesn't have to be more than a couple minutes and, and take a presence check. Who's here? How are you feeling? What's going on today? Uh, and, and then you get going. One of our favorites at Mural, we call it pick your nick. What you do is you put your name on a sticky note, turn that sticky note to your favorite color, and declare which one of these sentiments, as expressed by Nicolas Cage characters, best reflects you. We have happy, carefree, angry, relaxed, excited, bees, focused, stressed, and meh. Right, so we're going to do that right now. We got a couple people collaborating online. There's Lila. Um, I actually have to exit this here. So that I can participate. And I'm known for having purple sticky notes. And I'm going to stay with purple. You did a dark purple. I did do a dark Good. purple. And yeah, I might change one. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm also focused, though. Yeah. We have our presentation. We see Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan's <laughs> helping us out. He's online. And he's, he has a bees day. And we've all had bees days before, right? Is anybody having a bees day today, by the way? I'm not, because it's nice, and, nice to be here with you all in Montreal. But it's, it's nice to just kind of take inventory of not only who is there, but what's their gen general attitude and what's their general mood. Um, and if we were to do a workshop following this, for instance, and I know that Jonathan is having a bees day, that might affect his level of participation. And I know that now, right? The other thing you have is a roll call of everybody who's there. So if you make check-ins, a ritual that you're doing hybrid meetings with, you're not going to start without having the remote team there because you'll have everybody's name. The other thing that happens, by the way, in hybrid calls, if you've ever been the remote person looking at the heads of people in a meeting room, you don't know who's there sometimes. Have you ever had that happen to you? Where you hear this voice talking, barely hear the voice because they're far away from the stupid star phone. I have a thing against star phones, by the way. If you want to talk to me at the happy hour afterwards, I'll tell you why star phones suck. But um, you can't hear this person in the corner. And you're like, I don't even, I see the top of a head. I don't even know who I'm collaborating with, right? That's why hybrid meetings before the pandemic suck. But we need, to go, we, we need to do something better. How do you do that? One ritual at a time. Try a quick check-in. And there's variations of this, right, Lila? We have yeah. this with superheroes and cats. And you can make up your own. Actually, you there's one at the booth. So we have a booth oh, yeah? outside. And they have a similar one with puppies. And they are yeah. all official dogs of Mural. <laughs> right. So they're real dogs. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a consultant working with a client, you can theme this to be the products of your client or something like that, right? Another example of a warm-up, and I'm going to let you do this, Lila. Is that OK? Yeah. 
So this is an easy one. Um, this is a how do you feel today? And uh, Jim, are you following me? Uh, try, try summoning me again. There you go. There you go. Thanks. All right. So this is a question we ask in our day to day. How are you? I'm doing fine. You give an automatic answer. You're not being mindful about it, right? And what's great about this exercise is that you're actually helping people be mindful about the answer. And this is something that you can also do anonymously. So you can, you can put you know, this question, how do you feel today? Are you feeling more like thunderstorm? Are you feeling more like a sunshine? Are you feeling somewhere in between? So there's an example there. There's a little cup. And um, by, doing, um, by placing icons there already that people can just place wherever they want, you're also um, allowing people to collaborate in a more inclusive way. So if it's a hybrid check-in, right? So it's a hybrid ritual. Um, you don't know if people are going to be on a device like a mobile phone or a tablet, if they can type or not, right? Because sometimes it's not easy to type. Maybe they're just using something and they want minimal effort. So the lowest common denominator is just putting that icon, putting something there that allows them just to click and drag and place it there. Or if you have a large touch screen, one of the remedies for hybrid collaboration in the office is to have large touch screen devices also not not a silver bullet, and I'll tell you why. But you might have a large touch screen, and it's very easy for the people in the room to just walk over, and if it's a touch device, grab an icon and put it to how they're feeling today. Um, also, the selection of the icon gives a little insight into people's yeah. hobbies and, and, and what, they're, what right. they're into. Like, I tend to do a little guitar because I play bass, yeah. uh, so that's what I would pick. You would probably pick an airplane or something. What did you pick? <laughs> I picked a bomb. The bomb. And a, no, I picked the balloon. I would say I'm the right. balloon. Right, exactly. <laughs> but then you end up with a pattern that you can also reflect on, right? Again, before you start meeting and before you jump into your workshop, right, you have important strategic work that you're about to brainstorm on. If people aren't feeling well, you might want to know that as a group before you start in, right? Because again, that might help explain people's behavior, why they're either over-contributing or under-contributing, for example. All right, so this is the fun part where we actually bring you in. All right. So, Jim. Before we do that, though. What do we, oh, okay. Let, right? let, let's just take a pause on the, on the pause. URL. So if you have your laptops in the room and everybody on hop in there, mur.al slash rr22 should bring you into this canvas. Try to stay over to the right side because we might see your cursors, and I don't want you yeah. floating around here on the presentation. And I will repeat, the experience is going to be great on a laptop. Yeah. Um, so do join in from, from a computer or a laptop. Yeah. So what we want you to do overall is we want you to reflect on rituals that already happen in your workplace. And we want you to think about how you can transform those or how you can make those suitable for different situations, which I'm going to talk about now. Okay? Yes. Great. So, so we came up with this little framework to think about. Can you summon everyone? Uh, I can't. Oh, summon I will. Okay, All right. <laughs> Um, it's not about how can I get my workforce to work remote or in person. We believe it's about understanding multiple modes of collaboration. That we, we think the future of collaboration is multimodal. What do I mean by that? We came up with a diagram here to explain what I meant by that. We're taking on the one hand time and on the other location. Right, so if we look at location, in person is the left column and the right column is remote. And if we look at time, synchronous is the top row and the bottom row is asynchronous. That gives us four distinct modes of collaborating. In person and synchronous is a face-to-face -face meeting. Remote and synchronous is a Zoom call. Remote and asynchronous is using Slack and email to communicate back and forth. In person and synchronous, we actually have, each have a story of that happening, but it's very rare. In-person synchronous is something like putting up a poster in the office and having people contribute to it over time as well, too. There's a fifth mode that emerges, too, and that's the hybrid situation that we were talking about, where you're collaborating in real time, but you have people in, both, uh, in two different locations, people uh, in person and people remote. Um, we believe that it's a fluidity across all of these modes that is going to determine how well a team collaborates or not. Because on a given day, if you're interacting with multiple teams and multiple people, you might move in and out of any of these different modes. Uh, during the week, you might be, you know, on Monday, you might be remote and synchronous, then you might be remote and asynchronous, then you might all be in the office on Wednesday, and then you go back to, on Friday, you're remote and asynchronous again. 
So it's not about how you work in hybrid or how you work in remote or how well you work in person. It's how well you, you can transition between all of those. Part of, the, part of the trick there is recasting your collaboration rituals. You all have collaboration rituals. You have one-on-ones, you have stand-ups, uh, you have team meetings. There, even something like a design sprint can be considered a set of rituals, agile rituals. How do you then translate those to these different modes? Um, that, that's what we're going to do together as an exercise. Do you, uh, do you want to take them through that, Lila? I am going to take so This is a little bit of a that. thought exercise using this. So everybody take a snapshot of this. Actually, Wait, if they didn't. If you haven't taken a snapshot, <laughs> this is the time so to take if a you're, snapshot. If you're, on, if you're on the phone, I mean, if you're on hopping, then do, you know, take a screenshot of this. But you guys in the room, take a snapshot there. Well, I guess they're in the canvas, so they always have access to this. Exactly. All right, take it away. So we are going to get into the interactive part of this workshop. It's very short, so I'm going to show you what we're going to do first. So please pay attention to what I'm showing, what I'm explaining, and then you're each going to get the opportunity to do it yourself. So I'm just going to zoom out just to show you where we are. There are many of these <laughs> placeholders here where you can go and grab one. So I'm going to grab the first one on the left. Uh, do this later. I'm just going to show you what, what is meant to be done here. So you'll write your name. And if you're in Montreal, write your location, write Montreal. If you're not in Montreal, you can write virtual. Then we have three sticky notes. I hope you can all see this. Um, write three rituals that you do in your workplace. So one per sticky note. So I mentioned before we have the three questions for mm -hmm. new hires. Well, this is not mine, but IBM playbacks. And then we mentioned um, the retros, agile retrospectives. And then what you'll do, I'll give instructions, I'll give time. Uh, you pick three rituals, you pick one of these three. So I'm going to take the mural one. You drag it below, and then you say, which mode do you typically do it on? So you're going to grab the star, the star is unlocked, and you're going to put it on top of the mode. So Jim showed us the mode. You do it in-person and sync, remote and sync, in-person and async, or remote and async. So we usually do that one, remote and sync. Correct. Right? And then think about how would you do that same ritual in another mode? So you're going to pick another mode. I could pick remote and async, or in-person and async would be a hard one, but doable. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe I'll pick you know, the hard one, do that, and then say, in the sticky note, what would that look like? So if I want to do the three questions for new hires in person and async, what would that look like? So I'd have to think about it and maybe say, well, we could have a wall during a retreat right. and then have um, questions like on, posted on a wall and then let people write on sticky notes, answer each question throughout the retreat, right. for example, right? So I'm taking a ritual that we do in a almost like non-mindful way. Um, we do it habitually all the time, but we're, we're now trying to even think more mindfully, like how can we do that in a hybrid way or in a different way? So now I'm going to zoom out. You have time to pick one of, those, um, one of those areas, write your name. Remember to write your name and whether you are in Montreal or virtual. I'm going to mm -hmm. give you one minute. What if they're in Montreal but virtual? We didn't well, think, we didn't think we about didn't that. We didn't think about one. that, okay. see? <laughs> so I'm going to put a timer for one minute and write the three rituals that you have at your workplace. Just do that for now. Write the three which rituals. Um, Jim, are there any other, rit any other ways that you can think of, of doing a ritual like different, like the IBM playback? How, how, would, I, how yeah. would you do it different? I mean, you know, be thinking about how you would do that re remote and async. I think one of the big differences in those different modes is Sync versus async really just changes everything around. And it's really the rules of in the engagement, or what are the instructions? Yeah. How are you actually going to do that? And when we do our ritual about the three questions, it's very clear. Our CEO asks the question, mm -hmm. the person responds, it's on Zoom, and the rules of engagement are fairly clear. How would we do that in a different mode? It's going to change those rules of engagement. And by the way, you can also think about how would you do it hybrid? In other words, how would you do it with a remote group and an in-person group? collaborating at the same time. How would that work as well, too? Right. So, so you have two seconds left to do that part. Two seconds. All right. Well, no, I mean, I gave them Just, a minute. Oh. <laughs> I gave them a minute. Just for the free yeah. rituals that you do at work. Right? Exactly. So now I'm going to give you an extra minute to pick which mode you... So you have to pick a ritual, move it to the center of your area. 
Maybe pick an, uh, one that you do a lot so you can practice this in real life. And um, then take your star icon, move it to uh, your, your mode of uh, where you usually do it, and then pick another mode, drag it below, and write how you would do that differently. Does that make sense? So you're going to have your star. You already picked one ritual. You put it there. Then you place your star icon on, a, on one of the modes. Then you pick another mode, drag it below, and write. You double click to write in the sticky note. If you haven't used Mural before, if you double click, then you will write there. So I'm going to give a minute. And I see some people working. Thanks for that. Yeah, there's we some great We got some people ones. in Montreal. There's Jonathan is remote. Um, Chase is in Montreal. Thanks for joining, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a Boy. We have also Valérie Theo, in Montreal. Theo, Theo from Mural, yeah. I believe. So about 30 seconds left to do that. We, we need some background music for we this, do need this part. So usually yeah. we'll play background music <laughs> right, yeah. when we do Something this. we actually recommend. Yes. We have a whole playlist of... Uh, Great tracks for workshop music. Workshops, yeah. yes. It's on Spotify. It, we do have. Is, if, yeah. Yeah, I think if you look for workshops, um, yeah. uh, what is it called? Remote workshops by Emilia. Emilia has one. I have yeah. one too. You guys don't like my music, though. Probably it's all jazz. <laughs> a lot of jazz and more jazz. Oh, we recently discovered. I did a workshop um, with someone else, and we tried yodel music. For workshops, like, like, like I'm, I'm half Swiss, so, like, Swiss, so, Swiss, so right. we did yodeling, yodeling music. Yeah. It was great. Oh. It's like, I'm you, not going to do it. I got a, I got a tip um, yeah. once. Uh, video game music, like the Mario Brothers. Yeah, that works. It's actually designed to help you concentrate that music. Yeah. So like you, can, you can play video game music. Yeah, Tetris. Tetris and you soundtrack. play that little as, as, a ba as background music. Okay. Yeah. So, it helps um, people think, yeah. I'm going to read out, maybe I'm going to read one for a virtual participant, and you read one out from... Okay, uh, in the room here? In the room. So we have... Um, Can you summon me again? I, I, I broke, will summon I, you. I broke the summon. Jim tends to break a lot of things. I, I, All right. I'm, I'm very fidgety. I tend to move murals around when they're so in So let me, me see. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have Jonathan here, who's remote. All right. So let's see. Jonathan... Has active projects, daily send up, monthly all hands, yeah. um, and project status updates. So he selected project status updates. Usually they do that with his team remote and async. And so he was looking into how he would do it when he's remote and sync. Well, he would host the escalation call to collaborate on open oh. issues. So rather than doing that async, you're going to get everyone together in a meeting. It's almost like creating more meetings when you want less. <laughs> But this exercise was actually to see the, how we it, do it. It might happen that you have to be, do that in that, in that mode. And uh, right. the, the point is to be thinking about your rituals across those yeah. different modes. So yeah. thank you, Jonathan, yeah, for... Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. We're waving because we know there's a camera there for the virtual people. <laughs> Let's see. You want to pick another one? I'll, I'll pick one. Yeah, Emily is here in Montreal, right? Is Emily here? She's raising her hand. She's there on the right. On the right, there you go. Thanks, Emily. Is that okay if we look at yours together? Great. So weekly roundup, nice. Um, I, di I didn't hear that. Oh, they're right, basically oh, really? the same. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's pick another one. Uh, Team shout outs, man, and then you picked. Let's pick, yeah, um, remote let's pick Gonzalo. <laughs> Gonzalo. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna summon you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we have Gonzalo in Montreal, who I just met the other day, although we met virtually before. Mm -hmm. So he had morning meditation, standing calls, and learning Fridays. Mm. Uh, he picked one, which is standing calls. He usually does that remote and sync. Mm -hmm. So he picked in person and sync. What would that look like? Mm -hmm. Standing, walking meetings instead of seated ones. Ooh. I like that one. In, in person and sync. Oh, yeah. so the whole team goes for a walk. Where's Gonzalo? You do a standing oh. call Is together. That you, everybody just goes and walks around? Yeah. In Madeira specifically. In Madeira, very beautiful scenery. Nice, so nice. you can yeah. just walk and be yeah. inspired. I, I've actually integrated that into some workshops that I've done in the past, design sprint-like workshops, where a couple of the brainstorming sessions, we get up and walk around, meet at another location, you know, at the other end of campus or wherever, 
and then exchange in from, do a readout and exchange information because you're walking with sticky notes or whatever. You put different, and you put different sticky notes together, and then you walk back and you brainstorm on your way back as well too. I just, it's also, super effective. In Mural, you can search for images. Yeah. He sent my data. This is one of the first <laughs> images that came up. Nice. Not too shabby. Is that where you go walking, Gonzalo? Is that <laughs> where off the cliff. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we have like hiking all those places. Do. So nature. Yeah. We need green in our lives. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, both to all the participants um, yeah. virtually and in person who joined. Yeah, thanks for that. And we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, and then we can have a, we can have a little bit of a discussion um, with the remaining time that we have here. All right. Oh, yeah, I can just go like this. There you go. There you go. So when we talk about hybrid work, it's, it's, it's a mix. It's a blend of mode. But... I, I think the secret isn't to focus on one or the other. It's not about remote or it's not about hybrid. It's about f a fluidity of working across different modes. Because sometimes you're going to be in person, sometimes you won't, sometimes you'll have a mix. Sometimes you'll have the luxury of synchronous, other times you won't. If you've ever confronted time zones, you know that sometimes synchronous isn't even possible. So how do we, the, the, the real exercise is rethinking how you're going to cast your rituals and having them in a state that is fluid enough to move from one mode to the other without thinking about it, that it's ready to go. So what we encourage you to do is think about the rituals that you have and put some intention behind them and design them intelligently and design them intentionally. So think about your rituals and, and how you're going to design them, but also think about your collaboration in general and how you're going to design your collaboration. Mural just announced a new category called collaborative intelligence. A big part of that is collaboration design, and I'm happy to announce we've just formulated the Collaboration Design Institute, and we're gonna be talking about things like this and publishing things like this as well too. With squirrels. With, with squirrels, with yeah. Squirrels. Maybe, with, maybe, with a, maybe it'll be a different emoji there yeah. or whatever. Um, but take time to connect and reflect. The, um, the pick your nick that we showed, um, is super important because guess what? The, the yearly uh, team retreat or even the quarterly team retreat, that's not enough to connect teams that are distributed. That if you take the two minutes to connect before every interaction, you'll start to learn who your colleagues are and get to know them as people and you'll collaborate better, right? So connection should be ongoing. And think about that as you design your rituals. The pick your nick ritual helps you connect as human beings, but it also serves some practical functions of a roll call, making sure you take turns and things like that as well too. So when you rethink your rituals, think on how you can design them so that you connect at the same time. And move between the modes fluidly and practice that as well too. You might even take, do an exercise, just do an experiment and take something you typically do in synchronous like a stand up and say, okay, we're gonna do this asynchronously now just so that your team is thinking and conscious about those rituals. Think about the outcome of the ritual and how you're going to get it with, with different configurations and different modes. One of the things that we've seen is leveraging asynchronous collaboration more. Part of Zoom fatigue, everybody heard of Zoom fatigue before? It's not the software's fault, right? Don't blame Zoom because you just took your calendar and put it on Zoom, right? It, we should have really been intentional about what do we really need to do synchronously. And I don't know your level of async work here, but my guess is you're, you need to increase it. So successful hybrid work relies on an increase in async communication, right? Again, you need to rethink your rituals then for async as well, too. And I think one of the big problems, why hybrid is a topic, is because there's an inherent imbalance in communication, right? You forgot to call up the remote team. It doesn't get more imbalanced than that. But it, it goes on from there, right? How do you speak up if you're on the remote side of a hybrid call? How do you make decisions together? All of those things, there's an imbalance in communication. And when you rethink your, your rituals for different modes, you need to think about how are you going to be inclusive and how are you going to get everybody's perspective there? How do you discuss together? How do you debate together? How do you decide together? How do you determine the next steps together so that everybody can participate? Again, simple things like pick your nick is a, is a level setting technique that helps you connect, but also helps everybody participate as well too. So be intentional about your design, connect, move fluidly, leverage async, and make sure you're including everybody. Yes. And we have time for a Q&A. But I will say this right before Daphne comes up. Um, 
if you'd like to leave us feedback, so over here on the mural, I will summon everyone as well so you can see that. You can leave us feedback on the mural, and we would love feedback. It's always a gift to know yeah. how we can do better. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so All much right. for such a... An immersive session, you know, it's been so nice. We never experienced, you know, the full hybrid and see what it looks like. So you can, again, join the Slido, so sli.do online or live, and then write the code RR22 to ask a question. We have quite a good amount of time, actually. We have a good, like, 20 minutes, so we can actually have discussion. Yeah, and then once you log in, there is two stage. It's stage two. So you go sli.do in your browser, rr22 as a code, and then select stage two, and then you can ask all your questions there, and then we will be able to see them in the front and be able to select them. So they should come up uh, very soon on the screen. We can also take well, questions in the room, though, no? Or, or you want to Yeah, no, actually, every, to, to have an equal experience. That's right. And we are Slido. creating, uh, we are using Slido to have an equal experience for everyone. Um, so it's going to come soon on the, on the screen and, uh, is everyone, I'll give a little minute for people to ask questions. Sounds good. Great. Did you, were you in the mural? Yeah, it was, ah, it was, it was yeah. good, good experience. <laughs> Very good experience. Well, one of the, I mean, since we're talking about Slido, one of the, one of the punchlines for being able to move fluidly is to think digital first, as we say. That if you're trying to move from sticky notes and flip charts to digital and then back, yes. uh, you're just going to trip yourself up and you're not going to be able to do it. So think about how you're going to express yourselves and capture everything digitally so that you can just open your laptop and move from synchronous to asynchronous or in-person to remote and having everything digital. So huge fan of using Slido for the questions here. Tools like Mural and Asana and all of those tools that you have in your digitally defined workplace, that's what's going to allow you to move fluidly between modes. Yeah. Being digital first, have the best inclusive experience. <laughs> yeah. So we have one first question okay. that arrived now. So, um, and then I can let you, you know, select the questions as they come. And uh, I'll be not far to help. All right. So... Pick the first question that's there from Gonzalo. Uh, what are some rituals you love and companies can use for a happy brainstorm? Um, I'll, I'll give one, and then maybe you can okay. give another one. I have so, an answer. Yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when we were doing design thinking sprints, one of the brainstorming questions that I loved was to brainstorm like the opposite. Yeah. So Damn what it. is like the worst? That was mine. No. <laughs> 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 what, is, what is the worst? Outcome, what is the worst thing you can do to, to, that would like make your objective fail completely, right? So you're organizing uh, a party for a birthday party for yeah. Jim, and like you don't right. invite Jim, for example. Right. You, you start you thinking about. You forget to dial oh, me in. You forget to dial you in, right? <laughs> um, you, you say happy birthday, Mark, right? You, you do everything. <laughs> you buy a cake that he's allergic to. You start like brainstorming all the things that could possibly You're good go at wrong. This. I've, yeah. You're trying to ruin my birthday. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allergic to anything? No, no, no not, not really. Okay, yeah. I'm taking notes. Um, uh, yeah, so nut, start... Nuts and chocolate. Don't get me a nut and chocolate oh, cake. Oh, so you want a nut and chocolate yeah, exactly. cake. Cool. <laughs> so you start brainstorming on all these things, the, the horrible, the worst of the worst. And then... Um, then you take each of those, we do it on sticky notes, yeah. but you take each of those ideas right. and then you turn them into better ideas. And it doesn't always mean doing the opposite. It's like you have to be a little bit creative and think about, okay, uh, you know, how can we uh, say instead of happy birthday, right. Mark, like how could we actually make, you know, communicate that it's his birthday? Are we going to use balloons or are we going to think about something right. different, right? Yep. So that's one of my favorites. And typically, when you're brainstorming, you're thinking about doing that more or less synchronously, right? You might have a minute or five minutes of heads down time, but you're still synchronous, either remote or in person. How would, how would you do that asynchronously then? How might we do make also, it worse as an asynchronous exercise yes. as well, too? Yeah. And I could imagine setting up something like a mural or a Slido or something like that where people can contribute over time mm -hmm. their ideas. And then when you get together, the thing about asynchronous, uh, asynchronous work is it helps maximize your together time. So part of Zoom fatigue was also there's a lot of administrative and housekeeping that you have to get through. If you can offload a lot of that to async work, then when you get together, you don't have the five minutes ahead down. You're just, okay, we have all, everything right here. Let's cluster those or let's synthesize those, right? So thinking about a, a async brainstorming. The, my, the first thing that actually came to my mind 
was uh, the creative matrix. So as part of the new category that Mural is occupying called collaborative intelligence, we acquired a company called Luma, uh, L-U-M-A. It's a design thinking company. They have um, design thinking methods that they've packaged up and they can uh, teach and train um, across a large organization. So it helps large organizations scale design thinking. Now it's now part of Mural. And one of their methods is a creative matrix where you're not just brainstorming uh, by, by one or two dimensions, you actually think about multiple dimensions in a matrix, and then you brainstorm on each one of those boxes. So you take whatever situation you're in, and you think about different um, uh, scenarios around that and put them across the top, and then think about different alternatives on the side, and that gives you a unique brainstorming box for each of the creative matrix um, uh, activities so that you're brainstorming not just all together at the same thing, but it actually helps you move along and shift your attention. The creative matrix is a great brainstorming technique. Yes. Could we do that asynchronously? Probably. Probably. I don't know if I've ever seen it done I think you can do everything. Like I think you can like You too, can do right? almost everything <laughs> right. remotely. I just think it's a matter of shifting your mindset yeah, right. and then there you go. giving it a try. Oh. Uh, no, the questions are just there oh, for us. There. So we okay. pick... Jim, do you want to pick the next question? Pick. Just there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go down from the top. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Um, what are some rituals? No, we, it's the upper one. Oh, it's the, oh, because yeah. that one closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said email and Slack were examples of async tools. Are they really the best asynchronous collaboration? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I used to say that Slack saved me, saved me from email, but who's going to save me from Slack now, right? It's just... And I start salivating when that thing pings. <laughs> like a Pavlovian dog sometimes <laughs> as well, too. I don't know. I, I, I'm a fan of Slack, though, actually. And I do think it's actually a really good collaboration, async collab tool, collaboration. Sometimes it's synchronous, though, as well, too, right? Because yeah. you're doing it, like, in, in real time. Um, yeah. yeah. Any thoughts on, on tools, Lila? I said this before at some <laughs> conferences. It's more about the processes than the tools. So yeah, right. we may have Slack today. There may be there's other Slacks, right? Um, we have Asana. We have Trello. We have all these different tools for project mm -hmm. management. I think it's sometimes yes, it is the tools, of course. But it's it's about that's why Luma and Mural. You know, we have the methodologies and the tool. Right. So it's also about the process right. and how you use the tool. And if you your right. team yeah. has good <laughs> guidelines and best practices, then Slack can be great. Well, you can ritualize you know? Slack as you well, could. too. So yeah. what, what are the rules of engagement for certain exactly. channels? And we have a kudos channel yeah. in our, in our, yeah. on, on our company Slack board. And that has certain rituals around how people format it. Yeah. And then they respond there as well, too. Exactly. So if, it, if it's the Wild West in right. Slack, then maybe it's not the best We're, async right, tool. Right. But if, if you have right. these practices yeah. documented and um, encouraged and yeah. um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you're role modeling them. Then it's all good. I think, I think the big, when we talk about collaboration design, the, the big keyword there is being deliberate about collaboration. That applies to being deliberate about Slack channels, how you're using emojis in, yeah. in your Slack channel. Yeah. You can be deliberate about yeah. that as well, too. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, what are some rituals that should definitely be async, in your opinion? Hmm. I got a couple. Yeah, go for it. Okay. I need you to think about this. <laughs> I did a webinar with some people from Loom. Yeah, uh, anybody know Loom, the, the video platform? Is everybody's Loom? Yeah. I mentioned Loom sometime, and people don't know what it is. This, this audience, like <laughs> most of you know Loom, right? Yeah, everybody's nodding their heads. We did a webinar together, um, and it was really interesting how they use Loom at Loom, that they have rules of thumb around information share outs, right? So... When you're collaborating with a team, if you're just sharing information, the assumption is you will not do that synchronously. That if you have any information that you need to share, reading off some bullet points, doing a stand-up, a, a share-out of any kind, you do that on a loom, uh, and then you're, you're expected to watch that before you then come together and collaborate synchronously. Um, and uh, that, that's a big challenge. Uh, so I can get up on stage. It's really easy for me to get up on stage and wave my hands, and I wave my hands a lot, don't I? But wave my hands and say, more async, more async for everybody. Um, but it, it's actually hard to get folks to sometimes work async. You need a culture of, of async behavior as well, too. One way to do that, it sounds weird. This is going to sound weird. Mm -hmm. But do async synchronously. So if you want people to consume Loom videos before you come to a meeting, take the first five minutes where everybody consumes that together. Now, that sounds weird. It's, it's just a transition phase. But what it starts getting people in the habit of is, oh, I have a meeting, 
Before we start talking, we're all going to watch a Loom video. And then what happens over time is people really do that before the meeting, right? To get that culture shift there. Yeah. Uh, the ritual that came to mind for me was any kind of preparation. So what you mentioned mm -hmm. for a workshop, a meeting, that is a ritual you can do async. Um, and I think stand-up meetings. Yeah. I think all stand-up meetings. Some of that could be. Yeah, a lot of them can async. be done async because yeah. I don't need to. You can do it standing if you want, but I mean, I think doing right. it async is fine. Yeah, and we, especially if you have to because of time zones. Sometimes it's right, not a choice. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Before joining Mural, I was at another company, and we had people spread all the way from Indonesia to Central Europe, and so we had a, right. a whole like async stand up by nature. Right. Um, so you would you would just update. The and, team. and again, Slack has has bots yeah. that would inquire you every day. You get a little ping from Slack, and it would say, "Fill out these three questions." Right. Yeah. We set that up for our team. Yeah. So L was Lila was six hours away from me, and I would get up, and I would see Lila's stand-up answer to those questions, and then when the California guys got up, you know, so yeah. basically our stand-up was all day long. It was at least nine hours long, because yeah. we were nine times apart. And only apart. if there's a blocker, yeah. and you feel like you need to meet, because right. some blockers can be, right. done as uh, can be solved async as well, right. but many blockers, if, 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 they're, if they're urgent, then you can meet async, uh, yeah. sorry, synchronously. Right. I'm getting confused. All right, <laughs> uh, next question. Um, yeah. Do you want to read that one out? Yeah. What tip it. do you have for influencing heavy sync people towards me towards more async? And I am a heavy sync person. It sounds like a like a, <laughs> like a rock band name or something. <laughs> heavy sync. <laughs> a little bit. Jazz or rock? <laughs> no, ro okay. actual rock. Okay, yeah. Actual right. rock. Heavy metal jazz. It exists. Heavy though, metal actually. jazz. It's a there thing. But heavy <laughs> metal sync. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a heavy sync person. I'll, I'll jump on a one-on-one -on -one with you almost so, too easily. Can I say yeah. about your calendar? When I joined Jim's <laughs> team, it was just like blocks. <laughs> it looked like Tetris. One-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. It was yeah. just his whole week was like that. It's it was better just one -on -ones. now. Uh, I, I tend to do it. Yeah. Um, it, 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 is, it, is, it is tricky because you are going to have different... So one of the things about connecting... With, with your colleagues is understanding how th their mode of operating, right? Some people are visual, some people are auditory, some people are sync, some people are async, right? Um, and if you say, hey, we want to do things more async, um, you have to be you have to be a cognizant of the people that are going to lean into sync more, right? Um, and it, it takes time. And I think come up with the come up with the mechanisms to help people to help do people who might be more sync dominant to work in an async way. I think I just coined a term, sync dominant. Is that a, is that a thing? You guys, you can use it there. Hashtag sync dominant. There, there you go. go. <laughs> um, we can go on to the next question. So Mural is famous for being able to pull off synchronous all hands calls despite the distribution and scale of the company. What rituals make these a success? Um, so to give some context, we have an all hands every two weeks at Mural. We're now uh, 1,000 employees. Not everybody joins, partly because of time zones or maybe they're in meetings. They're always recorded so they can watch them later. But we have usually like 600 people in, in a Zoom meeting at a time um, during the all hands. So we used to start the all hands with a warm up. So what we did today with raising the hands and Other that's an example of a warm up. Down we the have time that until the end of the session. <laughs> Jim and I have and the up. small well, thing that we've done. We've done, done many warm ups over the, the years. Start of the session, um, so we would just do a warm up often only with Mural, but not necessarily you always know exactly with Mural. Uh, uh, we've had people like sing about a demo, like sing. So bring a guitar and say like, do this in Mural. And he's like singing. And it's just like it engages people a lot. I've noticed you don't use the AirPods anymore, but can you confirm? Uh, we've had the CEO also play music yeah, um, at the All Hands. Um, so what was the question uh, exactly? What rituals? Well, yeah, so having yeah. warm-ups, having check-ins, having ways of having everybody uh, collaborate. Sometimes we make it a little bit competitive. So we had one mural where it was like color in the rainbow with like 200 people in each team. Uh, not the rainbow, the unicorn, the unicorn and the rainbow. Right, yeah. So we had these crazy drawings of people, like 200 people at the same time trying to color in a rainbow uh, and a unicorn. Right and with the Mario music and all of that. <laughs> and so when you make it a bit competitive and then you have to vote yeah. for which drawing is the best, that gets people super engaged as well. Um, Another ritual in our all hands is bringing a customer bringing in. Customers. So we literally bring a customer on to, yeah. uh, to, to speak. We need to get back to that a little bit more. We are going to sure. do that. Yeah. We've also done other actually product demos yeah. to show new features that have been launched. So we show that, or things that are going to be launched right. soon. 
But um, they always end with, how do we end our, our all hands with Mentimeter? Yes. So we do yeah. uh, an, a, a Q&A. Right. And we thank you for reminding yeah. me. Because that's, <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's what I'm doing backstage one, all one the time. Things, yeah. um, so we have a Mentimeter. And in, in the past, we, we would let people just post questions in the chat. But there were so many questions coming right. in. So we moderate those questions. So we make sure that they're relevant to the speakers. Um, that's what I do backstage. And then we have an all hand Slack channel as well. So, right. you know, people engage there as well. Uh, we have a blog post as well. What about Bwamp? Bwamp. Ooh, Bwamp is good. <laughs> so, Bwamp is, you know, when you're, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, you give a webinar, you talk to a group of people on Zoom, and it's super quiet. So, you think right. that nobody's listening. Everybody's on mute, which is a good practice. So, Bwamp, B W A M P P. I think it's two P's at the end. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bwamp is this. A uh, tool that was built by another company, now the name escapes me, but basically it's, it allows people to open that tab and then react with sound. So if you're a speaker, you can hear chimes, cheering, cats meowing, cheering. Sad trombones. Um, what's that? The vuvuzela <laughs> the, the, kind of like, a, like an air horn. An air horn, yeah. And so you have like 400 people right. like, blah, 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 <laughs> and like ducks and it's all these things. Fun, yeah. So you're speaking and everybody's yeah. like clicking. It's kind of like emojis going up. Right. Um, it's really fun. So check out Bwamp. That's but we also, we, have. we don't use the chat in Zoom. In Zoom, no. We use the all hands channel in Slack only. Yeah. And, and Lila will be the first one to direct people away from the chat. And, and the Slack police. If, 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 you, if you type in Slack, so go to the all hands channel. Yeah. But then we'll also post the recordings there and have follow ups there as well, too. So the all hands meeting also then comes with a summary of all the n noises and cheers that people made, but also the recording and any official announcements as well, too, for that day. Yeah, we have a blog post yeah. about acing the all hands yeah. agenda with Mural. So if you right. want to read that. This is all deliberate, nice. though. Um, I mean, it's grown organically over yeah. time, but, the, but these are very deliberate behaviors that we maintain as part of our collaboration culture. And that's just one example of an all hand, right? Yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> you want to read the Oh, yeah, next sure. One? Uh, okay, that's the one. Uh, no, the second one. Okay. What is a good way to influence a senior leader who is more comfortable? Uh, oh, it just moved. Uh, with uh, paper sticky notes to start embrace digital first collaboration. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a challenge that we've had. Um, I've had for seven years or over seven years that I've been at Mural now. Uh, the pandemic has changed that quite a bit, right? Because there is a lot more remote collaboration. So this idea of touching your screen and having to interact a little bit more. And, and differently than you would with a sticky note uh, is things that I think even senior leaders um, are, more, are more comfortable with. But things that, the things that we like to recommend is do a warm up because getting people, you know, pick your nick also, that, that example of the warm up, or even sim simpler, just dragging an icon to how do you feel today, um, it opens up, it gives people permission. And it also lets them know that they can collaborate in a safe way. They're not going to break anything. It's all right there. They don't have to use the tool. All they have to do is either double click or drag a sticky note. So make it as simple. What's the lowest common denominator? What's the simplest thing that you can do? Double click on a sticky note and add your name. And it's already there and, and, and set up. And by doing a check-in, you get over that um, hesitancy of having to, uh, having to use uh, virtual sticky notes over paper sticky yeah. notes. But I don't know. I've had senior, lead senior leaders that I don't know if it's a senior leader thing or uh, an another dimension there, because I've had senior le leaders that love that, that you know, using mural and yeah. things like There's that. There's an so. even s simpler step to that. Yeah. Um, I sometimes would screen share, and I write down what you the write person what they, tells, what, they what say. the senior right. leader yeah. tells me, and right. I write it down for them, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, and then right. they start and you start seeing, it. seeing their ideas being visualized, and then I'll do what I did before <laughs> with Gonzalo. I'll take like an island, because they mentioned right. An island or something. I'll put an image, and then they're like, whoa, right. that's great. Right. So you try to like surprise and delight them, right. and be I think being playful right. helps. Agreed. So that's one of our values as well. At we have a great blog post of yeah. a sales team doing that with customers. During the customer discovery call, they're shill. And as the customer is talking, they're, re re they're playing back exactly. what the customer is telling them. So they actually get more engagement. They get better discoveries because their discoveries are more accurate because the customers, the client is actually correcting them because they can see what their notes are as well, too. And then it's colorful and you can add images and things like that as well, too. So that's another situation where you can share your screen and, and get people just comfortable with it before you actually ask them to do heavy stuff with it. Cool. Yes. I'm just checking for time. Oh, how we're yeah, doing. we lost the time up here. How are we doing, we're Daphne? Good. We still have 
You still have five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Just wanted to check because... How's the energy online? I guess some of these are coming from the hop-in group, right? Is that right? I'm, I'm assuming. Okay. I don't know for sure, but <laughs> maybe. Um, how to integrate long-form writing, mm -hmm. so which by nature implies asynchronous collaboration, yeah. with visual sharing like Mural? That is a good question as well. Long-form writing. I think it's like, what is the intention, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing long-form writing, there's a time for that. And what is what is the time to use something like a visual collaboration mm -hmm. platform? Right, yeah, yeah. So I think once you set that intention and you, again, right. make some kind of rules of engagement, it's like, when we do long form writing, exactly. we're going to do that. When we're doing project management, we're going to use this. When we're going to collaborate, right. we're going to use that, right? And what do we mean by collaboration? What do we mean mm -hmm. by project management? Like defining those things. At least that's the first thing that comes yeah. to mind. And, you know, the answer might be that Mural isn't good for long-form writing. We're actually endeavoring to write a book right now, by yeah. the way. Little hint, I don't think we've ever said that in public. Can I say that in public, Leah? <laughs> <laughs> we're writing a book, and we're using Google Docs. We do use Mural to supp supplement that, though, because very often there'll be a sidebar. Like, hey, what is this about? And we take it, and we visualize it, and we map it out. We actually mapped out the whole book in Mural before we did the long-form writing. But when you want to gather feedback on long form writing, things like commenting is, is a great way to do it. Um, we have then also taken that and put it back in the mural. If you want to see things like the images that you're using or page flow and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but you really need to, as Lila was saying, really think about what's your goal and what's the best tool to do that in. Uh, and it might, might be visual sharing only supplements uh, other, uh, other types of uh, long form writing uh, process that you have. Yeah. I'll let you, that next question is for you. Instead I, of the dreaded start phone in the middle of, oh, star phone in the middle of the table, how can I better set up a meeting room to be more collaborative with virtual participants? Well, if you're going to be digital first, first of all, um, we like people to show up in hybrid situations. The in-person people should have their own device. So the rule is one person, one device, right? You need to be very, very skilled and careful about audio if everybody joins a call from their own device, because you're gonna get feedback right away. So you have to know how to not only mute yourself, but turn off your speakers as well too, and make sure there's only one audio source in the room. But one thing that I've found is, uh, I mean, other than getting a better uh, microphone and speaker system for the room, and they have those drop mics and ceiling uh, speakers and things like that, which are much better than a star phone. Um, but if you don't have that, um, I find that uh, the, the experience for remote participants is way better than having a camera way up on the side of the wall and a microphone way over there and you're seeing the tops of heads and you're only hearing the people that are close there. It's a better virtual experience if you're looking at people at eye level. So having webcams on your, um, on your individual devices, so everybody has an, a device and having those webcams actually gives a better experience for the remote people. Audio is, is a killer though if more than one person logs into the to the to the call so be very careful about muting and turning off your sound yep um we have a question from rachel how do you come up with new and creative variations of truly inclusive hybrid activities yeah. to keep things interesting yeah. and interactive yeah. so i think you've had a taste of mm. that a little bit today yeah. hopefully um something else i like to do is this will sound not in that way but to get physical like mm -hmm. <laughs> so get I like to get people off, get people's bums off their seats. Yeah. Um, so when I'm doing a warm up, for example, at the beginning, and we're doing something hybrid, it's like no matter if we're in the room, like we had this once, we were all in one physical room and two people were remote. Um, I make people stretch, and the, there's like this stretching exercise, for example, where it's like you name the stretch. So somebody's doing this, everybody has to imitate that stretch, and then you, uh. you give that name, uh, that stretch a name. And then also it depends who you're working with. So right. if you're with developers, they'll come up with like, pull request, you know, like they're pulling, I'm like, okay, it's a developer <laughs> joke, but it's funny because it gets people laughing and it gets people up from their seats. Right. I see some people putting their faces yeah. and their hands there, but it's, it's just like, um, getting that hybrid action a little bit. So it's not, not everything has to be right. on your screen or like looking at each, we can like just kind of stretch a little bit. Right. I, I think it's a, a, about being creative and being willing to try new things. Right. So it's not only about being deliberate, but a willingness to experiment. And that's why I said, take one ritual and experiment doing it in a different way. It might, you might completely fail. And we experiment live on, in all hands. Like, Lila will be like, should we do this check-in? We're like, let's try it. We don't know if it's going to work. 
So uh, going out with a little bit of an experimental mindset, but then also bringing creativity to the table. Uh, one example, um, there's a, a, famous, a, a very common way of taking turns called popcorning, where the last person that goes picks the next person. How would you do that in hybrid? Well, one variation is that, that the last person that goes has to pick somebody who's in the opposite mode of them, and then they have to pick somebody in the opposite mode. So everybody online has to know all the names of the people in the room and vice versa, and you, instead of popcorn, you ping pong. Right? So just using a little bit of creativity like that and thinking about how you recalibrate your methods for the different modes is what's needed. Yeah. So experiment and be creative. Yeah, and another different, speaking of different modes, um, also getting more people to be async. So I've had meetings where it's like, we're all going to go offline now for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. go and do brainstorming in right. your room, wherever you want, in the garden, and then we come back. Come back yes. So we're doing, it's nice to know that we're all doing the same thing, even if we can't see each other, but right. it's exploring with different modes. I think that's another way of, of being creative. All right, so that was our last question. That's it. Yes, we are out of time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so yes. much for all the good questions. Right. Thank you also to Mural for this yeah. really immersive experience. Thank you so much. It's been really nice. Also, if there was a lot of question about async, a lot of question about async, and yeah. there's a session later, there's a panel Perfect. discussion that I'm going to be moderating as well. Go so. to that, go to that, everybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, come there, we're going to ask a lot of questions about async work. And uh, now we have a little break for 10 minutes. Uh, thank you so much thank for, you. for the right. session. And, and thank then, you, and thank you to well, the participants online. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.